Welcome to another enlightening journey on Monarch Mindset. Today, we venture into the enticing realm of the art of seduction penned by the master of power dynamics, Robert Greene. This tome isn't merely about romantic allure, but a profound exploration of how seduction operates in various facets of life. From the political arenas to the social landscapes, the art of seduction weaves through the tapestry of human interactions, shaping destinies. As we delve into this alluring narrative, we'll unearth the archetypes and strategies of seduction, intertwined with tales from history and modernity. In the heart of this grand city of stories, where every corner whispers tales of love, power, and intrigue, there's a particular alley known only to a few. This alley, bathed in the soft glow of lanterns, is our path ahead. As we wander its mysterious length, we'll encounter the various seductive archetypes, each leaving an indelible mark on history's canvas. From the haunting melodies of the siren to the daring escapades of the rake, and further into the comforting embrace of the ideal lover, these figures have shaped narratives across ages. But our journey doesn't end there. Beyond these archetypes lie strategies, tales, and lessons that have swayed empires and kindled romances. With the lanterns lighting our way, let's begin our first encounter, the Siren. Seductive Character Archetypes Number 1. The Siren In a city of grandeur and masks, there was one who stood out without trying. She wasn't draped in the most luxurious fabrics, nor did she have the most striking features. Yet, when she entered a room, time seemed to slow. Whispers trailed her every step. Who could command such attention? Many wondered. Her allure was reminiscent of Cleopatra, not just in beauty, but in the aura of mystery and confidence she carried. Have you ever felt a presence like that? Perhaps at a gathering, where amidst the chatter, one individual seemed to be the silent epicenter of attention. It wasn't about their attire or their looks, but something intangible an energy that drew people in. The secret to this allure isn't hidden in ancient scrolls or exclusive potions. It's about recognizing and embracing one's unique qualities. It's about walking into a room and being unapologetically oneself, letting the world adjust to your rhythm, much like that enigmatic figure in our tale and Cleopatra in the annals of history. Yet, as captivating as the siren may be, there exists another archetype, equally magnetic, but in a more rebellious, unpredictable manner. Enter the world of the rake. Seductive character, archetypes number two, the rake. In the same city, where shadows danced with secrets, there was a man who thrived on the edge. His name was never constant, but his reputation was. He was the talk of every salon, the subject of every gossip, and the dream of many hearts. His allure, passion, rebellion, and an unpredictable nature. He was the embodiment of the rake, a figure who, much like the legendary Casanova, drew people in with tales of adventures, love, and heartbreaks. His charm lay not in consistency, but in the thrill of the chase, the allure of the unknown. Have you ever been drawn to the unpredictable? to someone whose next move is a mystery, whose life seems like a roller coaster of emotions and adventures. That's the rake's signature. To channel this energy, one doesn't need to live on the edge every moment. It's about embracing spontaneity, about being fearless in one's pursuits, and about understanding the power of passion and unpredictability. Just as our mysterious man in the tale and Casanova in our history books, Yet, as thrilling as the rake's world might be, there's another archetype that offers a different kind of allure. A more nurturing, understanding allure. In the same city, where tales of passion and rebellion echoed, there were also stories of understanding, of seeing and being seen. This brings us to the ideal lover. Seductive character archetypes. Number three, the ideal lover. In a quieter part of the city, where cobblestone streets are lined with old bookshops and cozy cafes, there's a presence that draws people in, not with wild tales or daring escapades, 
but with a gentle understanding. Here, amidst the soft glow of street lamps and the gentle hum of whispered conversations, we find the ideal lover. The ideal lover is the one who sees the beauty in the mundane, the stories behind the silences, and the dreams hidden behind hesitant eyes. They have the gift of making one feel cherished, understood, and truly seen. Think of figures like Elizabeth Bennet from literature, or even Princess Diana in real life, individuals who had the power to connect deeply, making others feel special and valued. Have you ever met someone who made you feel like the protagonist of a novel? Someone who listened with their heart, making you feel like the most important person in the world? That's the magic of the ideal lover. Embodying this archetype isn't about grand gestures or poetic words. It's about genuine connection, about truly seeing and understanding others. It's about being present, being empathetic, and celebrating the uniqueness in everyone. Just as our attentive individual in this part of the city, and the many figures in history who've touched hearts with their genuine care and understanding, yet, as comforting as the embrace of the ideal lover might be, the city has more tales to tell. In its labyrinthine alleys, where certainty gives way to ambiguity, where definitions blur and norms are challenged, we encounter the enigmatic figure of the dandy. Seductive character archetypes number four, the dandy. Beyond the comforting corners of the city, where the ideal lover resides, there's a place where the unexpected thrives. Here, Amidst the shifting sands of convention stands the dandy, an archetype that refuses to be categorized. The dandy is a beacon of individuality in a world that often demands conformity. The dandy is neither completely male nor female, neither young nor old, neither rebellious nor conforming. They are an enigma, a living paradox that draws people in with their unpredictability. Historical figures like Marlene Dietrich with her androgynous charm, or David Bowie with his ever-evolving personas, encapsulate the essence of the dandy. Have you ever been intrigued by someone who defies all labels? Someone who seems to float above societal norms, challenging perceptions and evoking curiosity? That's the allure of the dandy. To embrace the spirit of the dandy, one doesn't need to rebel against every norm. It's about understanding and celebrating one's unique identity, about challenging conventions in subtle ways, and about being unapologetically oneself, just as the figures who've danced on the edges of society's stages, leaving behind tales of mystery and allure. But as the enigmatic aura of the dandy lingers, the city beckons us further to a place where strength meets subtlety, where power is wielded with a gentle touch. We are now on the path to meet the natural. Seductive character archetypes, number five, the natural. As we journey further into the heart of the city, leaving behind the enigmatic alleys of the dandy, we find ourselves in a place that feels both familiar and refreshing. Here, amidst the sounds of laughter and the sights of unbridled joy, the natural is the embodiment of childlike innocence and charm. They draw people in with their genuine curiosity, spontaneity, and a carefree spirit that seems untouched by the weight of the world. Think of figures like Audrey Hepburn with her radiant smile and playful demeanor, or Charlie Chaplin with his ability to find humor and light in the simplest of moments. Have you ever met someone whose spirit seemed untamed by the burdens of adulthood? Someone whose laughter was infectious, whose eyes sparkled with mischief and wonder? That's the magic of the natural. To channel the essence of the natural, one doesn't need grand strategies or calculated moves. It's about reconnecting with one's inner child, about seeing the world with fresh eyes, and about finding joy in the little things. Just as those rare souls who, despite the passage of time, remain young at heart, spreading joy and wonder wherever they go. But as the playful laughter of the natural echoes in our ears, the city's tales continue to unfold. We are drawn to another realm, where charisma meets mystery, where the allure is both gentle and profound. Our next stop introduces us to the coquette. 
Seductive character archetypes number six, the coquette. Venturing deeper into the city's maze, we find ourselves in a realm of shifting lights and tantalizing shadows. Here, the line between desire and indifference is tantalizingly blurred. This is the domain of the coquette. The coquette is the master of the push and pull, the hot and cold. They are unpredictable, often leaving others in a state of suspense and anticipation. Their allure lies in their ability to be present one moment and distant the next, creating an irresistible magnetism. Historical figures like Marilyn Monroe, with her blend of vulnerability and confidence, or even Napoleon Bonaparte, with his strategic retreats and advances, capture the essence of the coquette. Have you ever been captivated by someone who seemed always just out of reach? Someone who drew you in only to playfully push you away, leaving you wanting more? That's the dance of the coquette. To embody this archetype, it's not about playing games for the sake of manipulation. It's about understanding the power of absence, the allure of unpredictability, and the magnetic pull of desire and detachment. Just as those enigmatic figures in history who've left many spellbound by their oscillating charms, Yet, as the tantalizing dance of the coquette leaves us both intrigued and bewildered, the city's narrative beckons us onward. We are now drawn towards a figure of strength, determination, and unwavering focus. Prepare to meet the conqueror. Seductive character archetypes. Number seven, the conqueror. As the city's skyline stretches before us, Casting long shadows that hint at tales of ambition and triumph, we find ourselves in the imposing realm of the Conqueror. The Conqueror is a force to be reckoned with. They exude confidence, determination, and an unyielding desire to achieve their goals. Their allure lies in their unwavering focus and the power they command, both over themselves and the world around them. Think of figures like Alexander the Great, who carved empires with his ambition, or Cleopatra, who, with her intelligence and charm, conquered the hearts of the most powerful men of her time. Have you ever been drawn to someone with an indomitable spirit? Someone whose presence commands respect, whose ambitions seem boundless, and whose achievements inspire awe? That's the essence of the conqueror. To channel this archetype, it's not merely about seeking power or dominance. It's about cultivating an inner strength, setting clear goals, and pursuing them with relentless determination. Just as those monumental figures in history who've left behind legacies of greatness and tales of conquest. But as the towering achievements of the conqueror cast their long shadows, the city's intricate tapestry reveals yet another facet. We are now led to a place of warmth, compassion, and selfless devotion. It's time to delve into the world of the outlaw. Seductive character archetypes. Number eight, the outlaw. Moving away from the towering monuments that celebrate conquests, we find ourselves in the city's vibrant underbelly, where rebellion and passion burn bright. Here, amidst the graffiti-laden walls and the hum of underground music, we encounter the outlaw. The outlaw is the embodiment of rebellion and resistance. They challenge the status quo, break conventions, and rewrite the rules in their own unique way. Their allure lies in their fearless defiance and the freedom they represent. Historical figures like James Dean, with his iconic rebellious spirit, or Joan of Arc, with her divine defiance against societal norms, capture the essence of the outlaw. Have you ever been captivated by someone who stands against the tide? Someone who, despite opposition, remains true to their beliefs and passions. That's the spirit of the outlaw. To embody this archetype, it's not about mere rebellion for rebellion's sake. It's about having the courage to stand up for what you believe in, to challenge conventions, and to carve your own path, even if it means going against the grain. Just as those iconic figures in history who've left an indelible mark with their fearless pursuits and unwavering convictions. But as the fiery spirit of the outlaw ignites our passion for change and freedom, 
the city's ever-evolving narrative beckons us to a realm of mystery, depth, and profound connection. We are now on the path to meet the star. Seductive character, archetypes, number nine, the star. As we ascend from the city's bustling streets, we find ourselves drawn towards the vast expanse of the night sky, where stars shimmer with an ethereal glow. Among these celestial bodies, one shines with unparalleled brilliance, captivating all who gaze upon it. This is the realm of the star. The star is a beacon of inspiration, aspiration, and dreams. They possess an otherworldly charm, a magnetic aura that seems both distant and intimately familiar. Their allure lies in their ability to inspire, to captivate, and to transport us to realms of imagination and wonder. Think of figures like Marilyn Monroe, with her timeless allure, or David Bowie, with his celestial persona that transcended time and genre. Have you ever been mesmerized by someone who seemed to exist on a different plane? Someone whose very presence seemed to radiate light, drawing people in like moths to a flame? That's the magic of the star. To channel this archetype, it's not about seeking the limelight or being the center of attention. It's about recognizing and nurturing one's inner light, about being a source of inspiration and wonder. Just as those luminous figures in history who've left behind legacies of dreams, hope, and starlit memories. As the shimmering aura of the star begins to fade, our journey through the city of stories takes a new turn. The tales of archetypes give way to the intricate dance of strategies and tactics. We now delve deeper into the art of seduction, exploring the methods that bring these archetypes to life and make the dance of attraction truly mesmerizing. Strategies of Seduction Seduction method number one, choose the right victim. In the heart of our city, where tales of passion and strategy intertwine, we find ourselves at the entrance of a grand theater. The Marquis announces the first act, choosing the right victim. In the world of seduction, the stage is set not by the seducer, but by the chosen. The right victim isn't necessarily the weakest. There's someone with a void, a yearning. They're the individual in the crowd, whose eyes betray a hint of longing, waiting for someone to awaken their dormant passions. Imagine a modern-day coffee shop. Among the hum of conversations and clinking cups, there's someone seated alone, engrossed in a book but occasionally glancing up, seemingly lost in thought. To most, they're just another customer. But to the astute observer, this individual, with their subtle signs of seeking connection, is the perfect opportunity for a meaningful conversation. In practical terms, this method is about recognizing those subtle cues that people give off, indicating their openness to connection. It's not about preying on vulnerability, but identifying mutual resonance. Just as a magnet is drawn to metal, the seducer is drawn to those who resonate with their energy. But as the curtains draw to a close on this act, the theater's ambiance shifts, preparing the audience for a tale of subtlety and indirect approaches. We're about to delve into the art of creating a false sense of security. Seduction method number two, create a false sense of security approach indirectly. The theater's ambiance shifts, the lights dim. The scene is set for our next act, creating a false sense of security. In the intricate dance of seduction, direct approaches can often lead to resistance. The art lies in approaching from the side, making your intentions known, but not overtly. It's the allure of the unexpected, the thrill of the chase. Imagine a bustling art gallery opening. Amidst the crowd admiring the artwork, you spot someone whose work you genuinely admire. Instead of directly complimenting them, you strike up a conversation about a particular piece, discussing its nuances, its inspirations. As the conversation flows, you subtly reveal that you know and appreciate their work. The indirect approach not only flatters, but intrigues, making them more receptive to your words. To employ this method in our lives, Think about those times when a straightforward compliment or gesture might come off as too forward or insincere. Sometimes, approaching a situation or person indirectly 
with genuine curiosity and interest, can create a more profound connection. It's the difference between saying I like you and making someone feel liked through your actions and words. As the art gallery fades into the background, the theater transitions to a world of mixed messages and enigma. We're about to explore the realm of sending mixed signals. Seduction method number three, send mixed signals. The theater's lights play tricks on the eyes, casting alternating shadows and beams, creating an atmosphere of uncertainty and anticipation. The stage is set for an act that thrives on unpredictability, sending mixed signals. In the realm of seduction, clarity can sometimes be your enemy. A little ambiguity, a hint of unpredictability, can stir intrigue and desire. It's the age-old allure of the unknown, the human tendency to be drawn to things that are just out of reach. Imagine a masquerade ball from a bygone era. Among the masked attendees, there's one individual who stands out. At times, they're the life of the party, engaging in animated conversations, laughing heartily. But then, just as suddenly, they retreat to a corner, their demeanor contemplative, their gaze distant. This oscillation between extroversion and introspection, between being present and being lost in thought, makes them the most intriguing person in the room. Drawing a parallel to our lives, consider those moments when revealing a little less or showcasing contrasting aspects of our personality can make us more captivating. It's like sharing a personal anecdote that surprises people, showing a side of you they hadn't seen before. The unpredictability keeps them guessing, eager to know more. But as the masquerade ball reaches its crescendo, the theater's ambiance begins to shift once more. The allure of being desired, of being the center of attention, beckons. We're about to delve into the art of appearing as an object of desire. Seduction method number four, appear to be an object of desire, create triangle. The theater's ambience now mirrors a bustling city calf, where every table tells a story. Here, we explore the dynamics of becoming an object of desire and the art of creating triangles of attention. In the realm of attraction, being sought after by many can amplify your allure. It's the principle of social proof. If many are drawn to you, there must be something uniquely captivating about you. Imagine attending a local event or gathering. Instead of sticking to one group or individual, you mingle, sharing stories and laughter with various attendees. As others notice the attention you're receiving, their curiosity about you grows. They wonder what makes this person so interesting to others. To employ this method in real life, consider diversifying your social interactions. Attend different events, join clubs or groups and engage in varied conversations. Being active and well-regarded in multiple circles can enhance your overall appeal. It's not about playing games, but genuinely connecting with diverse individuals, which naturally elevates your social standing. Yet, as the calf's conversations ebb and flow, our attention shifts to a more introspective theme. We're about to delve into the nuances of understanding and tapping into the unspoken needs and anxieties of others. Prepare to explore the strategy of creating a need and stirring discontent. Seduction method number five, create a need, stir anxiety and discontent. The theater's setting morphs into a serene lakeside where the calm waters reflect the stillness of the surroundings. But, as we delve deeper into this act, we realize that beneath the surface, currents of discontent and yearning flow. In the intricate ballet of human emotions, contentment can often be a barrier to new connections. To truly captivate someone, one must tap into their underlying anxieties and desires, making them acutely aware of what they're missing. Imagine being at a lakeside retreat. You encounter someone contentedly gazing at the horizon seemingly at peace. Instead of a casual chat about the beauty of the lake, you pose a thought-provoking question. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond those mountains? Suddenly, their content gaze is replaced by a look of curiosity and yearning. You've introduced a hint of discontent, 
a desire to explore and experience more. To apply this method in everyday life, it's about recognizing and subtly highlighting areas of potential growth or exploration in others. It's not about making someone feel inadequate, but about awakening a desire for more. Whether it's suggesting a book that challenges their current perspective or discussing a place they've never visited, the goal is to stir a gentle restlessness, making them see you as a gateway to new experiences. But as the ripples on the lake grow wider and the horizon seems more distant, the theater's ambience shifts to a more mysterious tone. We're about to delve into the art of subtle suggestions and the power of insinuation. Seduction method number six, master the art of insinuation. The theater's ambiance shifts to a dimly lit room filled with mirrors, each reflecting a slightly different image, creating a maze of ambiguity. This act is dedicated to the art of insinuation, the craft of planting seeds of thought that grow organically, making the target believe the ideas were their own. In the dance of seduction, directness can sometimes be a foe. The power of insinuation lies in its subtlety in the ability to suggest without stating outright, to hint without revealing. It's the allure of the unspoken, the promise that lingers in the air, tantalizingly out of reach. Imagine a scenario at a book club meeting. As discussions flow, instead of directly stating your interpretation of the book's theme, you pose a question. Did anyone else sense an underlying tone of rebellion in the protagonist's action? You've not imposed your view, but planted a seed. As discussions progress, members begin to see and even champion your perspective, believing it to be a collective realization. To weave this method into your interactions, think of communication as an art. Instead of laying all your cards on the table, hold some back. Use suggestive language, pose questions, and let others connect the dots. It's about guiding their thoughts subtly making them more receptive to your influence. But as the room of mirrors begins to clear, revealing a singular, clear reflection, the theater prepares for a deeper connection. We're about to journey into the very soul of our targets, understanding and mirroring their essence. Seduction method number seven, enter their spirit. The theater's ambience shifts to a serene garden where individuals wander, each in their own world, lost in thought. The scene captures the essence of our inner worlds, which are often guarded in private. The challenge of this act is to bridge that distance, to step into another's world and resonate with their spirit. In the dance of seduction, it's not enough to merely understand someone. You must truly enter their spirit. This means immersing yourself in their likes, dislikes, passions, and fears. It's about mirroring their energy, validating their emotions, and creating a space where they feel seen and understood. Imagine you're at a music festival, and you meet someone who's passionate about a genre you're unfamiliar with. Instead of dismissing it, you express genuine curiosity, asking them to introduce you to their favorite tracks. As the music plays, you don't just listen. You immerse yourself in it, feeling the rhythms, the emotions, and sharing the experience with them. This act of shared experience, of entering their world, creates a bond that's hard to break. To integrate this method into your life, practice active listening. When someone shares something with you, be it a story, a passion, or a fear, be fully present. Ask open-ended questions, validate their feelings, and show genuine interest. Over time, this creates a deep sense of trust and connection. As the garden scene fades, with individuals forging connections amidst their solitude, the theater's ambiance takes on a more tantalizing hue. The air grows thick with anticipation, and the audience is left on the edge of their seats. We now delve into the art of creating temptation. Seduction method number eight, create temptation. The theater transforms into an enchanting garden, reminiscent of the Garden of Eden. The air is thick with the scent of blooming flowers, and in the center stands a tree, its branches heavy with forbidden fruit. This act is all about temptation, the art of making the forbidden irresistible. 
In the realm of seduction, temptation isn't about what's offered, but how it's presented. It's the allure of the unknown, the promise of a pleasure that's just out of reach, making it all the more desirable. Imagine being at an exclusive event where a renowned musician is set to perform. Before their arrival, snippets of their melodies play, whispers of their past performances circulate, and the anticipation builds. When they finally take the stage, the audience is already entranced, hanging onto every note. The allure was not just in the performance, but in the build-up, the promise of what was to come. To integrate this method into your interactions, think about the power of anticipation. Instead of revealing everything up front, tease a little, give a glimpse, and let their imagination do the rest. It's about creating a hunger, an eagerness that makes the eventual revelation all the more satisfying. As the garden fades and the allure of temptation lingers, the theater's ambiance shifts to a dimly lit room with a pendulum swinging, creating an air of suspense and uncertainty. We're about to delve into the art of keeping them guessing, making them wonder what comes next. Seduction method number nine, keep them in suspense what comes next. The theater's ambiance transforms into a grand masquerade ball with masked attendees dancing in intricate patterns, never revealing their next move. The allure of this act lies in the unexpected, the thrill of unpredictability. In the realm of seduction, predictability is the enemy. When someone feels they figured you out, the allure diminishes. The key is to always be one step ahead, to introduce elements of surprise, ensuring that the other person is always on their toes, always guessing, always intrigued. Imagine planning a date. Instead of the usual dinner and a movie, you send them a series of clues leading to various locations. Each spot holds a memory or a special activity, turning the evening into an adventure. The anticipation, the excitement of not knowing what comes next, makes the experience unforgettable. To weave this method into your interactions, embrace spontaneity. Surprise them with unexpected gestures. Change plans last minute to something more exciting or introduce new topics of conversation that they wouldn't expect from you. The goal is to be a delightful enigma, a puzzle they can't resist solving. As the masquerade dancers take their final bow and the masks come off, revealing familiar faces with mysterious smiles, the scene shifts to a dimly lit library, emphasizing the power and allure of words. Seduction method number 10. Use the demonic power of words to sow confusion. The theater's ambiance shifts to a dimly lit library, walls lined with ancient tomes, and the air filled with the soft murmur of whispered secrets. This act delves into the power of words, their ability to enchant, bewilder, and captivate. In the world of seduction, words are more than mere communication tools. They're instruments of influence. The right words, spoken in the right way, can bypass the defenses of even the most guarded individual, tapping into their deepest desires and emotions. Imagine being at a poetry reading. The poet, with their carefully chosen words and rhythmic cadence, paints vivid images, evoking emotions ranging from passion to melancholy. The audience is spellbound, hanging on to every word, feeling every emotion. It's not just about the content of the poem, but the way it's delivered, the emotions it stirs, and the images it conjures. To harness this method in everyday interactions, focus on the power of active listening. Understand what the other person yearns to hear and craft your words to resonate with those desires. It's not about manipulation, but about creating a connection, a bond that's forged through shared emotions and understanding. As the library fades into the background, the theater prepares for the next act, emphasizing the importance of the little things. We're about to delve into the art of paying attention to detail. Seduction method number 11, pay attention to detail. The theater's ambiance shifts to a luxurious, intimate setting. The stage is adorned with intricate patterns, delicate fabrics, and soft lighting, emphasizing the beauty of details. Here. We explore the power of subtlety and the art of noticing the little things. 
in the realm of seduction. Grand declarations and overt gestures can sometimes be overwhelming or even insincere. It's the understated to seemingly insignificant moments and gestures that often leave the most lasting impressions. Imagine a couple dining in an upscale restaurant. While the ambiance and the food are exquisite, it's the handwritten note discreetly placed under the plate, the favorite flower subtly incorporated into the table's centerpiece, or the soft tune playing in the background that recalls a shared memory which truly captivates the heart. These thoughtful details, tailored specifically for the individual, speak volumes more than any grand gesture ever could. To integrate this method into your interactions, focus on the nuances. Remembering someone's preferences, noting the small things they mention in passing, and acting on them can create a profound connection. It's about showing that you truly see and appreciate the individual, not just the idea of them. It's the difference between buying a generic gift and one that resonates with a shared memory or personal joke. As the audience is entranced by the allure of the details, the theater's mood subtly evolves, preparing to transport us to a world where presence becomes an art form. We're about to explore the method of poeticizing one's presence. Seduction method number 12. Poeticize your presence. The theater transforms into a serene, moonlit landscape. A solitary figure stands in the distance, their silhouette illuminated by the soft glow of the moon. As they approach, they vanish, only to reappear moments later from a different direction. This act delves into the art of making one's presence felt like a hauntingly beautiful poem. In the dance of attraction, it's not just about being present, but how you make that presence felt. Being constantly available, can lead to predictability, diminishing the allure. On the other hand, a well-timed absence, a sudden reappearance, or a fleeting moment of intense connection can leave an indelible mark. Imagine attending a masquerade ball. Among the sea of masks, there's one individual who captures everyone's attention, not by being the loudest or the most flamboyant, but by their ability to appear and disappear, to engage deeply and then retreat, leaving a trail of whispered conversations and lingering glances. Their aura is enhanced by the symbols and motifs they've chosen for their attire, making them a living, breathing poem. To weave this method into your interactions, consider the rhythm of your engagements. Sometimes, it's the unexpected text after days of silence, the decision to skip a regular meetup only to plan a surprise later, or the choice of a symbol or gesture that resonates deeply with shared experiences. It's about ensuring that even in absence, the memory of your presence lingers, creating a tapestry of anticipation and intrigue. As the moonlit scene fades and the audience is left pondering the enigma of presence, the theater dims, preparing to explore the power of vulnerability. We're about to delve into the strategy of disarming through strategic weakness and vulnerability. Seduction method number 13. Disarm through strategic weakness and vulnerability. The theater's ambience shifts to a dimly lit room with shadows dancing on the walls. In the center, a figure stands, seemingly fragile and overwhelmed, drawing the attention and sympathy of those around. This act delves into the power of vulnerability, a strategic display of weakness that disarms and draws others in. In the intricate game of seduction, Always appearing strong and in control can be a double-edged sword. It might project confidence, but it can also create distance. Sometimes, showing a hint of vulnerability, a crack in the armor. Imagine a gathering where everyone is trying to outdo each other with tales of their achievements. Amidst the bravado, one individual shares a heartfelt story of a personal challenge, their voice quivering, their eyes glistening. The room goes silent, all eyes on them, drawn to their raw honesty and vulnerability. In that moment, they become the most captivating person in the room. In real-life scenarios, this method is about balancing strength with moments of genuine vulnerability. It's not about being manipulative, but recognizing that everyone has weaknesses and fears. Sharing them at the right moment can create a deep bond. It might be admitting a fear, showing genuine emotion, or sharing a personal story that reveals a softer side. 
These moments of authenticity can make you relatable and endearing, turning sympathy into a deeper connection. As the room's shadows merge and the figure is bathed in a soft glow, the theater prepares to delve into the realm where desires blur with reality. We're about to explore the art of confusing desire and reality, crafting the perfect illusion. Seduction method number 14, confuse desire and reality, the perfect illusion. The theater transforms into an ethereal dreamscape where the boundaries between reality and fantasy blur. Floating clouds, shimmering lights, and soft melodies create an atmosphere of enchantment. This act introduces us to the art of weaving illusions so captivating that they become the desired reality in the realm of seduction. The most potent allure isn't always the promise of something real, but the hint of a dream realized. It's the whispered possibility of a fantasy brought to life, the idea that through you, one's deepest desires might find fulfillment. Imagine attending a masquerade ball where everyone is in disguise. Amidst the sea of masks, you meet someone who seems to understand your unspoken dreams. They talk of places you've always wanted to visit, experiences you've yearned for, painting a picture so vivid that for a moment, you're transported there. The line between what's real and what's imagined becomes indistinguishable. For real-world application, think about those moments when someone shares a dream or a desire with you. Instead of merely acknowledging it, immerse yourself in it. Paint a picture with your words, make them feel it's within reach, and position yourself as the bridge to that dream. It's about tapping into their daydreams and making them feel that, with you, those dreams edge closer to reality. As the dreamscape fades and the masquerade ball reaches its climax, the theater darkens, preparing the audience for a more intense strategy. We're about to delve into the tactic of isolation, where the seduced becomes singularly focused on the seducer. Seduction method number 15, isolate the victim. The theater's ambience shifts to a secluded, dimly lit chamber, distant from the bustling world outside. The setting evokes a sense of solitude, emphasizing the power of isolation in the game of seduction. In the intricate dance of attraction, sometimes the most potent move is to draw someone away from the familiar, leading them into uncharted territories. By doing so, you become their anchor, their sole point of reference in a world that feels both exciting and disorienting. Imagine a weekend retreat to a remote cabin in the woods. Away from the distractions of daily life, the city's noise and the constant buzz of technology, two individuals find themselves relying solely on each other for company. The shared experiences, the conversations, and the silences all become more profound, creating a bond that might not have formed in a more familiar setting. In real life scenarios, this method can be employed by creating shared experiences that are unique to the two of you. It doesn't necessarily mean physically isolating someone, but can be about introducing them to new ideas, hobbies, or experiences that they haven't encountered before. By becoming their guide in these new adventures, you position yourself as a central figure in their evolving narrative. As the secluded chamber scene concludes, and the echoes of shared secrets linger, the theater prepares to showcase the importance of proving oneself in the world of seduction. We're about to witness the lengths one might go to demonstrate their sincerity and dedication. Seduction method number 16, prove yourself. The theater spotlight focuses on a lone figure standing center stage, symbolizing the vulnerability and sincerity required in this act of seduction. The backdrop is a vast, starry sky emphasizing the idea of going to great lengths to prove oneself. In the realm of attraction and seduction, words can often fall short. Actions, especially those that demonstrate genuine effort and sacrifice, speak volumes. It's about showing, not just telling, that you're genuine in your intentions and feelings. Imagine a scenario where someone, despite their fear of heights, decides to go on a hot air balloon ride simply because they know it's a dream experience for the person they're trying to connect with. The act itself 
facing their fears, becomes a testament to their sincerity and the lengths they're willing to go to make the other person happy. In everyday situations, proving oneself doesn't always require grand gestures. It can be as simple as being there for someone during a challenging time, making sacrifices to spend time with them, or showing through consistent actions that you prioritize and value the relationship. It's about demonstrating that the other person's happiness and well-being are paramount to you. As the lone figure on the stage is bathed in applause, symbolizing acknowledgement and appreciation, the theater's atmosphere shifts to a nostalgic hue. We're about to delve into the power of memories and regression in the art of seduction. Seduction method number 17, affect a regression. The theater transforms into a dreamy, ethereal landscape reminiscent of one's childhood memories. Soft lullabies play in the background, and the stage is adorned with symbols of innocence and nostalgia. A rocking horse, a teddy bear, and a gently spinning mobile. Tapping into deep-seated memories can be a powerful tool in seduction. By evoking feelings of comfort, safety, and the uncomplicated joys of childhood, you can create a bond that's both profound and emotionally charged. It's about making the other person feel cherished, protected, and understood on a level that few can reach. Imagine a scenario where two individuals are sharing stories from their childhood. One of them mentions a particular lullaby their mother used to sing, which they haven't heard in years. The other, sensing the depth of emotion attached to this memory, learns the lullaby and surprises them by singing it during a quiet moment together. This simple act, rooted in a shared regression to a time of innocence, can forge a deep emotional connection. In real life applications, it's about recognizing and responding to those moments when someone reveals a cherished memory or sentiment from their past. By acknowledging, respecting, and even participating in these regressions, you can create a bond that's both intimate and deeply rooted in shared human experience. As the lullaby fades and the dreamy landscape slowly transitions, the theater prepares its audience for a journey into the forbidden. We're about to explore the allure of the transgressive and taboo. Seduction method number 18, stir up the transgressive and taboo. The theater is shrouded in a dim crimson hue, evoking an atmosphere of secrecy and forbidden allure. Shadows dance on the walls and the faint sound of a heartbeat resonates, setting the stage for a journey into the realm of the taboo. In the dance of seduction, there's an undeniable allure in the forbidden. Crossing boundaries, challenging societal norms, and exploring the hidden recesses of desire can be intoxicating. It's about allowing oneself and the other to venture into territories that are often kept hidden or suppressed. Picture a masquerade ball where attendees wear masks, allowing them to assume different personas and act out fantasies they wouldn't dare to in the light of day. Two individuals, drawn to each other, decide to keep their identities hidden, reveling in the mystery and the thrill of the unknown. The very act of not knowing, of transgressing the usual norms of interaction, becomes a seductive game in itself. In everyday scenarios, this could translate to trying out new experiences that might be considered taboo or off-limits in one's social circle or community. It could be as simple as visiting a place you've been told to avoid, trying a forbidden cuisine, or engaging in an activity that's outside your comfort zone. The shared experience of breaking boundaries, even in small ways, can create a sense of complicity and intimacy. As the masquerade ball fades into the background and the masks are slowly removed, the theater transitions to a realm of higher consciousness. We're about to delve into the ethereal world of spiritual lures. Seduction method number 19, use spiritual lures. The theater transforms into a serene sanctuary, bathed in a soft, ethereal glow. The scent of incense wafts through the air, and the gentle hum of a distant chant creates an atmosphere of reverence and introspection. This act invites the audience into the realm of the spiritual, where the soul's yearnings take center stage. In the intricate ballet of seduction, there's a dimension that transcends the physical. It's the realm of the soul, 
the spiritual, where connections run deeper and are more profound. By tapping into this realm, one can address the deeper insecurities and doubts that often plague the human psyche. Imagine a setting where two individuals find themselves on a retreat surrounded by nature's beauty. They engage in deep conversations about life's mysteries, the universe, and their place in it. As they meditate together, they experience a connection that goes beyond the physical, feeling as if their souls are intertwining. This shared spiritual journey becomes a powerful bond, making any physical connection that follows feel like a union of souls. In real life, applications, this method is about recognizing and addressing the deeper, often unspoken, yearnings of the soul. It could be as simple as sharing a profound piece of music, visiting a place of worship together, or engaging in deep philosophical discussions. By connecting on this level, you create a bond that's both deep and lasting. As the sanctuary fades and the chants grow distant, the theater prepares to delve into the contrasting world of pleasure and pain, where emotions are heightened and every sensation is intensified. Seduction method number 20. Mix pleasure with pain. The theater darkens and the ambience becomes intense. A spotlight focuses on a pendulum, swinging back and forth representing the delicate balance between pleasure and pain. This act delves into the complexities of human emotions, where extremes often coexist, amplifying each other. In the realm of seduction, monotony is the enemy. Continual kindness, while initially appealing, can become predictable. To truly captivate, one must introduce elements of unpredictability, moments of tension, and even discomfort. It's in these moments of uncertainty that passion often ignites. Imagine a couple deeply in love, but one partner, feeling taken for granted, decides to pull away. The distance creates a void, a longing. When they finally reconcile, their reunion is charged with heightened emotion, a mix of relief, passion, and an intensified love. To apply this method in real life, it's about understanding the power of absence, of creating moments of tension, only to relieve them with moments of intense connection. It's not about playing games, but recognizing that a relationship thrives on highs and lows, on moments of closeness and moments of longing. As the pendulum swing slows, the theater transitions to a scene where roles reverse and the dynamics of pursuit change. Seduction method number 21. Give them space to fall the pursuer is pursued. The theater's ambiance shifts to a grand ballroom where couples dance in perfect harmony. But as the music changes, one dancer steps back, allowing their partner to take the lead. This act is about the dance of pursuit and the allure of being pursued. In the intricate ballet of attraction, there's a magnetic pull in the chase. But if one is always the chaser, the dynamic becomes predictable. By stepping back, by allowing a hint of indifference or distraction, you reignite the other's desire to pursue, to win back your attention. Consider a modern day scenario. Two individuals deeply connected, sharing moments of intimacy. But one day, one of them, seemingly lost in their world or showing interest in another, creates a subtle distance. This shift, this change in dynamic, awakens a renewed desire in the other to reclaim that connection, to be the pursuer rather than the pursued. To harness this method, it's about understanding the balance of power in relationships. It's recognizing that sometimes, by stepping back, by allowing the other to chase, you create a renewed passion, a rekindled desire. As the ballroom fades and the dancers exit the stage, the theater prepares for a more primal, visceral act. We're about to delve into the power of physical allure. Seduction method number 22, use physical lures. The theater transforms into a dimly lit jazz club, the sultry tones of a saxophone filling the air. In the midst of the crowd, a figure stands out, not because of their words, but because of their presence. This act is about the power of nonverbal cues and the allure of physical magnetism. In the realm of seduction, Words can sometimes be a double-edged sword. They can clarify, 
but they can also create doubt. However, a lingering glance, a subtle touch, or even the way one carries themselves can speak volumes more than words ever could. It's about the unspoken, the things felt, rather than said. Imagine a scenario where two individuals are at a party. One of them, rather than engaging in small talk, simply maintains eye contact, smiles enigmatically, and occasionally leans in, their voice a soft murmur. Their entire demeanor exudes a quiet confidence and sensuality. They're not overtly forward, but their physical presence is undeniably captivating. To employ this method, it's about understanding the power of subtlety. It's not about being overtly sexual, but about exuding a certain energy, a magnetism that draws others in without them even realizing why. As the jazz club scene fades and the sultry tones become a distant echo, the theater prepares for an act of audacity and courage. We're about to witness the art of making a bold move. Seduction method number 23. Master the art of the bold move. The theater's ambience shifts to a high-stakes poker game. The tension is palpable, players eyeing each other, waiting for someone to make a move. And then, in a heartbeat, one player goes all in. This act is about seizing the moment, about understanding when to take a risk and make that audacious move. In the dance of seduction, there comes a point where hesitation can be fatal. The other person might be on the fence, their desire evident, but their reservations holding them back. This is the moment for a bold gesture, something that shows them your intent without a shadow of a doubt. Imagine two people who've been dancing around their feelings for each other. They've had moments of closeness, but always pull back at the last minute. Then, one day, in a setting where they least expect it, one of them takes the initiative. Maybe it's a passionate kiss or a heartfelt confession. This bold move changes the dynamics completely, leaving no room for ambiguity. To employ this method, it's about recognizing that pivotal moment and having the courage to act on it. It's about showing the other person that you're willing to take a risk for them, to put your feelings on the line. As the poker players react to the audacious movie, the theater dims, preparing the audience for the aftermath of such bold actions. We're about to delve into the complexities that follow a successful seduction. Seduction method number 24. Beware the after effects. The theater's ambience becomes somber. The setting reminiscent of the calm after a storm. The scene depicts the complexities and intricacies that come after a whirlwind romance or a passionate encounter. This act is about understanding the emotional ebbs and flows that follow intense moments and navigating them with finesse. In the world of seduction, the aftermath can be as crucial as the act itself. Once the initial euphoria fades, what remains can be a mix of emotions from contentment to doubt, from longing to indifference. It's a delicate balance, and if not handled with care, can lead to the undoing of all that was achieved. Imagine a couple who've had a passionate whirlwind romance. The initial days were filled with excitement, every moment an adventure. But as time goes on, they start to settle into a routine. The intensity fades, replaced by a sense of familiarity. One of them starts to feel taken for granted. The magic seems to be waning. But then, out of the blue, a surprise getaway, a thoughtful gesture, or a heartfelt letter rekindles the passion, reminding them of what drew them to each other in the first place. To employ this method, it's about recognizing the importance of keeping the spark alive. It's about understanding that seduction doesn't end once you've won someone over. It's an ongoing process. It's about never becoming complacent and always finding ways to remind the other person of your value and the unique connection you share. As the curtains draw to a close, the audience is left with a profound understanding of the nuances of seduction, from the initial allure to the complexities that follow. The theater dims, leaving behind tales of passion, strategy, and the eternal dance of attraction. As the pages of the art of seduction gently close, we find ourselves reflecting upon the timeless dance of allure and desire. Through the intricate weave of Robert Greene's narrative, 
we've journeyed into the depths of human connection, attraction, and the subtle power dynamics that underpin our most intimate interactions. Each chapter, a lesson in the art of enticement, has illuminated the pathways of passion and the strategies of the heart. Our exploration, seductive strategies, delving into the art of seduction, has taken us through the corridors of history, across tales of legendary lovers, and into the very essence of what draws us to one another. Yet, as we conclude this chapter of our journey, remember, this is but a glimpse into the vast landscape of human relationships and the myriad ways we seek to connect, captivate, and conquer. Here at Monarch Mindset, our odyssey of unveiling the essence of self-development through insightful book summaries continues. As we transcend the pages, we extend the invitation for you to join us in exploring the endless realms of self-empowerment. Before you venture forth, we beckon you to grace the like button with a noble touch and share your sage thoughts in the comments below. Your wisdom is a treasure, and we are curious which tome should we venture into next on our quest for enlightenment? Your suggestions are the stars that guide our course through the cosmos of comprehension. Subscribe now, and together, let's embark on new voyages, delve into new dimensions, and ascend the throne of our life's narrative, one book summary at a time. So, until our narratives cross paths again, remember, the essence of power is not just about conquering the external realms, but mastering the monarch within. Embrace the journey, for the tapestry of tales is endless, and the vista of wisdom boundless. Here's to many more voyages into the veritas of life, with Monarch Mindset as your companion. Fare thee well, noble navigators of knowledge, until the next unveiling.